In this lesson, we're going to take another look at the EV3 software and talk about some features that I haven't shown you already. I'm going to work with the educational software in this lesson. Most of the time the home software will be very similar and I'll try and point out when it's not. I've opened up this program um, that we wrote before with um, some tired eyes followed by the snoring. And in fact, I think if I click on tired middle, by the way, and I want to see what the tired middle looks like, I can click on this little box right here that says display preview. There you go. So remember, we've got these tired eyes, goodbye preview, and then we have the snoring. Okay. Um, and so far, every time we've started programming, I've closed out this content editor. But let's talk about it a little bit now. I think of the content editor as being useful for two distinct types of tasks. First off, it's a good way to document your project, that is, write information about your project that's intended for humans to look at so that they can better understand what's going on. That may not seem very important right now since the projects that we've written so far contain only one or two short programs. But as your projects and programs get longer and more complex, it'll become more and more important to make sure that you document them. Good documentation can help others who are looking at your code for the first time, and also tends to be surprisingly useful when you go back to a piece of code that you haven't worked on for a while. Okay, so I've opened up um, a couple of projects that we had open before my animal sounds project and behind that you can see the greetings project. I'm just going to click on this little X. I don't want to work with greetings right now. So let's work on the animal sounds project and let's write some documentation. So here's our content editor and you can see up here if you hover over the pencil you can go into edit mode and then hover again. You can click on it again and go back into view mode. The content editor is actually a little bit weird because you can actually do some editing when you're not in edit mode. So for example, even though I'm in view mode right now, I can click on this little text thing and I can type some text. So let's say, you know, the amazing animal sounds project. And then of course I can edit the font of my text, make it nice and big and maybe change the color and so on, right? But it's much more interesting if you go into edit mode. So let's go into edit mode. When you're in edit mode, you'll see this kind of double screen if you have the educational edition and the version of the educational edition that you are running was installed in teacher mode. Um, because there's a difference between the software that you install on your teacher's or instructor's computers and the software that you install on the student computers. If you have the home version, it'll look very similar, but you only have one window over here. We'll see that in a minute. The other thing I need to warn you about just a little bit is you do want to be careful. Um, you do need to see this whole... Um, content editor window and and sometimes if you have it open on a laptop you know you might not see the whole window and there's buttons down at the bottom we're going to need to use so what I need you to do is just make sure it's stretched out or maximized so you can see all this stuff okay so um, something else we can do here is we can add some more pages so I clicked on this little plus sign down here to add pages and you can see a bunch of templates along here that give you options for how to um, how to lay this out. You want to think of it almost like you're documenting using kind of a series of web pages. So let, let's try this template 10. So now I have a second page. I'm, I'm on page 2 out of 2 right now. I can also go and look at page 1 out of 2. Um, and if we go to page 2 out of 2, we have kind of three areas to put stuff in. Um, we can do some more text if we want, so we can write, you know, this project is fantastic, and I can highlight fantastic and make fantastic green, and I like making things big, so there we go, and bold and italic. All very exciting, so we've got kind of a text area in here. Um, 
You can also import images. So if you've saved an image already, let me click on this image button for this piece. And then you need to go and click on this little select image button. And I have pictures in my pictures folder. I'm going to upload this robots picture. There we go. So I've got a robots picture here. Um, and then there's other things you can do too. You can put in what they call building instructions, though it's a little bit disappointing this building instructions because they expect you to take pictures of all the Lego parts that, that you're going to show for your building instructions. Um, you can insert a pre-recorded video if you want using this video section. You can insert a pre-recorded sound. Um, this document section is supposed to make creating a page easier, but I don't think it does, so we're going to ignore it. Um, this over here, this webcam section, is interesting. If you click on it, and then you click down here on open webcam, if your computer has a webcam, you can insert a picture of whatever the webcam is looking at in this window right here. Now, I can't do that right now because if I do it, it will stop the screen recording that I'm making for you, but trust me, if you click on that button, you can open the webcam. Um, the other thing that you can do that's kind of neat is you can make a table. So let's suppose I want to make a table and down here I can add rows or let's add a column and you know we can call this row thing one and this row thing two and we can say that thing one went from 10 to 15 well I guess 20 and thing two went from 45 to 70 right and if you look now, if we switch into view mode, you see, you know, kind of an interesting page that tells us something about, about this project, right? So that's kind of nice. Let's go back into edit mode for a minute. Here we go. Um, right now I'm in the, um, I'm on the student side. So I'm editing things that everyone can see. You can also edit notes that only those who are running the teacher's version of the educational edition of the software can see. So if I click on this little um, blue box here, I can go into teacher mode. And again, you don't have this in the home edition. But if I go into teacher mode, now you can see I'm editing this page right here, teacher notes. So I could add a note to remind myself, maybe I could click on the text button and I could say, don't forget to tell the kids how to use the webcam before asking them to do so, right? And again, I don't know if you can see that. Let's make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Um, and this is a note that's associated with this page. I can look at the student page, which just will show the students this, but I have my own teacher notes that the students won't see. And as you see, I can toggle between the two. I can switch between the two either by clicking on the student page here. I can click up here. There's nothing on this teacher page, which is next to this title page. Or I can switch between them, teacher mode and student mode. So I'm in teacher mode right now on this top right picture. I don't know if you can see it on your screen, but that's just highlighted a little bit. And I can switch back into student mode. Okay. Um, so let me go into view mode and we can look at page one, we can look at page two. Um, what I want to do now is I want to show you how to write some program specific documentation. So this is great for documenting the project, but I have a cat program, I have a dog program, and I have a dino program. And you can imagine if these programs get super long, there may be some strange things that that you want to document, right? And so one thing that we can do is we can use what's called the comment tool, and that's right up here. And if we click on the comment tool, that gives us a little box, and we can move that box over wherever we want to add a comment to. And I'm going to write, remember to draw the picture before playing the sound. Right, and maybe over here at the dog growl, I'll insert another comment. 
and let me just drag this over and I'll say yes this says dog growl but I think it sounds like a dino growl too and let's make this let's move it up a little bit and make it a little bit bigger so you can put in program specific comments within your program and as your programs get longer I really encourage you to do so